Recently, I actually visited Magic Land in Florida, and boy, was I amazed by the open live experimentation going on through Disney. From the minute we got there with the kids, uh, we were subjected to fingerprinting, the RFID bracelets, the Magic Band bracelets, and asked whether we wanted to use the bracelets uh, to purchase food and other things. Well, really what you can do with these is uh, go up to every ride as you go and click on uh, or scan your bracelet against Mickey's ears, a console um, that says that you're there. And if I had requested this, a picture would have been taken of me and my family on the rides. And imagine doing this over a period of a whole day, you know, usually at Disneyland for about 12 hours, it's very costly to attend, and all this footage is being amassed. So you're being surveilled from the turnstile right to the exit point again. Whether you're smiling, whether you're happy, whether you're spending, how frequently you're spending, what you're not spending on, and whether you're disgruntled by being in an hour's queue or through a fast lane. And so we're inviting surveillance today. We're asking to be watched. We want to be watched and we want to keep a record of being watched, which is crazy in my eyes. But I couldn't think of a better open live experiment, a living lab, than Disneyland. If I take that into the context of today with our Internet of Things devices, our IoT device-enabled things in our homes, like Mattel's Hello Barbie that could converse with your child, or Amazon Alexa uh, that takes scripts of what you're talking about in a private context, or Google Home, which is connected to a drop cam and is feeding your actual live video data back to the cloud for observation, perhaps, and machine learning and other analytics applied to it. We're actually inviting IoT devices to watch us and observe us every day. And it's the first time in history this has happened where we allow for this trespassing to recur. M.G. Michael calls it ubervalence. It's big brother on the inside looking out. It's when we invite surveillance, we invite this level of watching into our homes, streaming video and media, so that in the future, if we continue in this path, law enforcement, government, anybody may be able to find you, where you are, who you're with, and what you're doing. And I think this is a crazy new world we're living in, where the notion of intelligence or marketing will disappear and it's actualization which we'll be able to get at a press of a button. But the risk with ubervalence has to do with misinformation, misrepresentation, and abuse of individual power. It's information manipulation. So if I do away with marketing and intelligence, what I have is real-time data streaming from homes, streaming from personal devices that people are wearing, and I'm invading their actual space. And I don't buy the argument I'm just doing what the consumer wants. I'm just further personalizing, tailoring and tunneling. No, I think that is a reduction in trust and it's a reduction in credibility as far as I'm concerned. And persuasive technology can be used for good and it can be used for bad. You know, I had a crazy example recently where I entered a Virgin Plus cooperative team project which was to count the number of steps. And I was never going to do the recording of the steps, but I wanted to see if I came out with zero steps, what Virgin Plus would tell me. And in a motivational email I got, it said, congratulations, Katina Michael, you have done zero steps. And it showed me a trophy. And I thought, classic, I need to take a picture of this and put it on my website. Now you can argue that is really poor design is really bad persuasive systems design. But in actual fact, I think that's where society has come to. Congratulations, you've given us over all your data. Here's a trophy. We wish we could pay you, but here's a trophy. Doesn't it make you feel good about yourself? So in this live experimentation, we have to remember, we're like those guinea pigs on those turnstiles that are running, 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 so they can get to the food, but we're never gonna get to the food. We're being conditioned that the food is waiting for us, but we're going to go home with empty stomachs if we get fed at all.